Hey all, so I just want to do some extra examples here for our first lesson in uh, equations of a circle. If you need a little extra help, um, this is the video for you. So the first thing we did was we talked about writing the equation of a circle if you knew what the, the center and the radius was. And so as always, you're going to write the formula every single time and then you'll never forget it and then uh, you should write h and k above your center so you know that h is the x value and k is the y value that helps you know which numbers to plug in and the radius is r and that is um, a square root of 5 and so then we just plug in 0 for h and 3 for k and we plug the square root of 5 in for r. So I'm going to actually put that in parentheses because I need to square it. And then I can clean this up a bit. x minus 0 is just x, so that's x squared. y minus 3 squared, that's good. And then the square root of 5 squared. So before when we were solving for d for distance, it had a squared on it and we wanted to get rid of it and so what we did was we square rooted it because squares and square roots cancel each other so when we do the square root of 5 squared those things cancel each other and we are left with 5 and there's our equation and I have another one like that I'm always going to write my equation and I will label my center H K. This is one of those unique ones where the center is at the origin 0 0. But I'll still do it the same way. I'll plug in 0 for H. Just in case you don't remember that's the origin and what it's going to end up looking like you can just plug in 0 for H and K. And then I'm going to plug in the square root of 7 for r, my radius. And so x minus 0 is just x, keep the squared. y minus 0 is y, keep the squared. That's what we get when we're centered at the origin. It's a special case. And then again, the square and the square root cancel. And so on the right side of my equation, I get the number 7. And then we also did the opposite. We were able to uh, find the center and the radius. So again, always writing my formula. I know my center is going to be HK. And my radius is going to be R. And if I look, h is 13. Since there's a plus in my equation, that means I plugged a negative 13 in. So h is actually negative 13. k is 7. And then there's a plus there. It's opposite. So if there's a plus in the formula, then there's a minus in the center. So that was a minus 7 for k. So there's our center, negative 13, negative 7. And then to get the radius, those two things need to be equal. R squared needs to be equal to 20, 27. And like I just said on the previous page, and like I've said before when we did distance, to get rid of the squared, you square root. Squares and square roots cancel each other. You can go ahead and do this in your calculator if you want. The square root of 27. is uh, we'll say 5.2 and actually when we're doing this we don't want to have decimals so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this uh, here I'll scribble that out even though I can erase I'm just gonna say r is the square root of 27 and leave it at that I don't want to do any rounding 
if you have a question of why we wouldn't want to round, I'll, uh, feel free to just ask me and I can explain it to you. I just don't want to confuse anybody here. Let me do one more. And I'll just invite you two to pause and if, if I'm going too fast or rewind if you need to listen to me again. Our center is HK. And our radius is R. So H is 8. Since there's a plus in the equation, that means I plugged a negative in, so it's actually negative 8. K is 13. Again, there's a plus in the equation, so that must have been negative 13. It's the opposite. Whatever sign you see in the equation here, the opposite is going to exist in the coordinates of the center. Here, R squared needs to be equal to 16. And then we can square root both sides to get rid of the squared. And we'll get R is 4. The square root of 16 is 4. The two most important pieces of information when you're talking about the equation of circles are the center and the radius. We need to know how to plug them in. We need to know how to get them out of the equation. And then we can just write the equation if we have a graph. It's the same idea as, and I'm going to make this a bit smaller. It's the same idea as if we already are given the center and the radius. We just have one extra step. We need to find the center and the radius. So my center is right here at negative 4, negative 1. That's my h, k. And then I can draw any radius. That's one unit, even though it's two um, two squares, you can see that two squares is equal to one on this graph, so r equals one. So starting with my formula, knowing my center and my radius, having labeled hk, I can plug in h is negative four, K is negative 1, and R is 1. And then we're just going to clean that up. Whenever we plug in a negative from the, uh, from the center, we end up with a plus in our formula. X plus 4 squared, Y plus 1 squared, and then 1 squared is just 1. So big, big reminder, any time you have a negative in the center, it's a plus in the in the equation, anytime you have a plus in the center, so a positive value, then it's going to have a minus in the equation, and that's because the original equation has a minus in it. So let me do one more of those and make this a bit smaller so I have some room. We need to locate the center. Looks like it's right there at 4, 1. So that's my HK. And then my radius is going to be two units. Again, two of these boxes is one unit, so my radius is two. So I can write my formula. I'm writing it every time, and therefore I'm going to memorize it. I'll never forget the equation of a circle. And then I plug in what I know. If I've labeled my H and K, I can just pick out what I need. I need 4 for H. I need 1 for K. And R is 2. And then I'll just clean this up here, simplifying my equation slightly. 2 squared is 4. Remember, there's no solving for x, there's no solving for y, there's no solving here at all. It's just plugging in what you know and simplifying so that we now have an equation that describes this circle. So the last thing I want to do is talk about identifying points on a circle. Um, if, if a point is on a circle, that means that we can always plug the 
x value in for x of the equation, the y value in for y, and this whole side of the equation will be equal to the right side. So if I pick a point out and I plug x in for x and y in for y and simplify this left side, it should all simplify to be equal to 27. And we can always find four points on a circle pretty easily. One way to do that is by graphing. So we actually picked out that these, this is from earlier in this uh, video, that the center is at negative 13, negative 7. And actually, this is going to be a bad example, so let me skip to this one. Here, my center is negative 8, negative 13, and my radius was 4. I want a nice um, integer as a radius. I don't want the square root of 27, so we'll do this one. So I can go plot this uh, negative 8, negative 13 on a bum, 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 on my Desmos. And you can actually put the coordinates in. I'm just going to draw. So negative 8, I'm going to need to zoom out a bit. So I'm going to go negative 8, negative 13, boy. This is awfully far. Is right there. There's the center of my of my circle. And so then my radius my radius was 4. Okay. So since my radius is 4, starting at my center, I can count in all four directions, right, left, up, down, four units, and I should end up with four points that are on the circle. Okay. So if I count uh, to the right, one, two, three, that point's on the circle. That is negative 5, negative 13. I didn't count far enough. I only counted three. Nobody yelled at me. I got to count four. One, two, three, four. That's better. So that would be negative four, negative 13. My original coordinates were negative eight, negative 13. Notice if I add four to negative eight, I end up at negative four. That's another way to think about it. I could also go left. 1, 2, 3, 4. I could go left 4. That's the same as subtracting 4 from negative 8 and get negative 12, negative 13. My y value stays the same because I haven't moved up or down. Now I can go from my center and I can go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. My x value stays the same because I didn't move left or right. And I add 4 to negative 13 and that's at negative 9. Or I could go down from my center, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, negative 8 stays the same because I haven't moved left or right. Uh, and it's like subtracting 4 from 13, which is negative 17. So I'll sketch kind of a rough circle here. And you can see that that circle would be centered at negative 8, negative 13. It has a radius of 4. And it would go through all four of those points. So you could locate four points for every circle. You know its center and its radius just by plotting the center and then going right, left, up, down. Uh, the measure of the radius, which in this case was four, and finding those. Or you can um, do some adding and subtracting. So to get this one, I added four to my x. Here I subtracted four from my x. This one I added, or I subtracted 4 from my y, added 4 to my y. Here I subtracted 4 to my y. And I'm going to do one more. Stick around if you want. Here, uh, my center is at the origin. Since I just have x squared plus y squared, my radius squared... Uh, my radius squared 
is equal to 121. So real quickly, r is 11. The square root of 121 is 11. So I will uh, I will plot that. So I need to plot my center at the origin, and then I can count to the right 11, and I'd have 1.110. I could count to the left 11. One point is negative 11, 0. I could count down 11 or up 11. I can't really make that happen here. So if I counted up 11, I would have 0, 11 as a point. If I counted down 11, I would have 0, negative 11 as a point. And so that would be four points on the circle just by going right, left, up, or down, always starting at the center of your circle. Hope that helped you. If you still have questions, please feel free to ask me when you get a chance.